the first echoes of the past of the occultist. Few minds are ready for the other planes. Let's get weird. Let's get culty. Occultist. Chapter one. The ritual. On certain portentous evenings, carefully selected for their astrological potency, he would gather his devotees around the ancient onyx table, and joining hands with them, would send his spirit out into the void. Safely tethered by their vital energies, he was free to wander the outer spheres in search of some dark communion and impossible power. All right, no actual gameplay one here. So we get the mastery as usual, and we get vulnerability hex. So it ignores stealth, and it also gives a vulnerability token to an enemy and removes, uh, not stealth, excuse me, dodge. It ignores dodge, removes dodge, and gives the target a vulnerability token. That's actually really strong. It's a lot of things. The main thing that comes to mind is the cultists, and there's also some in the sprawl that have a lot of dodge. Uh, including a dodge plus token. I assume this also bypasses the dodge plus token the same way. So definitely, again, one of those things that I've been saying, like as you unlock all the skills and you learn what each zone contains, you can really take the skill that helps you in that zone. And as long as you remember to switch them out, uh, you can switch it out for the next zone. So I, I really like that. That also is a strategic layer. I mean, I use that kind of stuff in the first game where we would switch moves in and out before a boss. You can switch skills in the first game in a dungeon as long as you're not in a battle, for instance. But uh, yeah, I'll probably use it some, but it's going to be one of those niche things depending on the zone. So the occultist shrine echoes of the past. That pyramid changed everything. Turn the sound up for this. Chapter 2. A Door in the Desert He found himself in a vast expanse of windswept dunes. Ahead, the stone spires of a pyramidal temple called down jagged bolts from a rolling, angry sky. Undaunted, he crossed the threshold of the towering aperture settled himself upon the central dais and prepared for the coming sacrifice. All right, let's see what we unlocked. So we unlocked Binding Shadows. Used from the back three positions, can hit any of the front three of the enemy. Does decent damage, decent crit, like, well, medium damage. Decent crit moves forward, has a 50% chance unupgraded to add a power token for him. We'll have to see what the upgrade does for that one also. Uh, as is, that might be a move that I would use in place of his dagger, especially like right now, for a couple reasons. One, it's not going to eat up combo points right now. And two, when we have that, that happen where the Jester jumps in front of him and we would like to be able to hit the front line with the occultist we can do so so having a move that we can use from position four that hits position one on the occultist seems really good so i'll probably we'll probably see some use with that move all right the next shrine of reflection for the occultist echoes of the past back then i was not yet wise enough to know fear Chapter 3. Some Parts Must Die Terrible though it was, he would pay the price for power. Slay your virtues? How have I been feeling, Modwife? Uh, I've been pretty tired is the only thing, so nothing new there. So we have Repress. I don't have to do an alright overall. Thank you for asking.
his chains are pretty cool. We can use ignore. We're gonna heal and we're going to give them a weakened token. Oh, the two of them resisted it, wow. Spammers. These guys are like Sub-Zero, just doing the leg sweep or ice slide over and over. Going wolf, welcome in. Oh, crit plus strength. A little worried about that. Oh, and now we're vulnerable too. Vulnerable and weakens. But there's only two of you left. Half my virtue is gone. Two vulnerable tokens. I think they don't stack like 100% extra damage to 50%. You know what I mean? Like I'm the same attack from an enemy. Which sort of way we're using the cultists? We did a melee of cultists. It was very good. Twenty. The emptiness in him called out across boundless gulfs of unknown space. For nature abhors a vacuum. <laughs> Alright, uh, that was one of the easier ones out of the battle ones, but still kind of cool. So, plus one mastery. Mastery points are invested at the end, of course, we know that. We unlocked Malediction. Malediction is pretty interesting. It, I wish it d did like more of a dot. And the reason why is it has this requirement. So we saw this in when we were hovering over his moves. Malediction is nice because you can use it from any position. It can hit any position. And the enemy gains when hit a bleed, a blight, and a uh, burn. The downside is we have to have two stacks of power to do it. It'll be interesting to see what the actual upgrade is. Maybe the upgrade requires us to have less power, tokens, or maybe the gain on hit is higher. Of course, no reason to speculate. We'll just see it at the end. The next occultist shrine of reflection, echoes of the past. I took too much and gained even more, but. Chapter four, the guest. Drawing vitality from the assembled mediums, he would hold fast against the thing and harness a portion of its power. I did not think this was coming because we just had a battle related one with him. Uh, so we have a summoning table here that he's at. And then we have the dimensional shambler. We have shifting boundary deals damage. Uh, it combos self and removes a uh, combo from allies. We have weakening curse. We make the Shambler weak, weaker and inner strength. An extra action would give us three stress. Self heals 20%, remove stuff, target gets stressed. Then we have the Burning Stars. The guest.
slow suffering begins. Anxiety forms insidious fears. Uh, I think we should probably heal. Interesting. Oh no. I see how that works. Seven, eight, nine, ten. They're gonna heal a little bit. Uh, do we want to get up to burning stars? Maybe not yet. We're at seven. We gotta be careful. to 13. 10% chance to crit also. Oh my god, they're at 9. They crit! <laughs> Imbued with strange currents of infernal origin, his apotheosis was complete. That was pretty cool, yeah. Uh, so the whole thing is, they, I was worried that the table wouldn't heal stress, so that's the big thing to note. The table will, will heal stress, just don't get them to 10. So we unlocked the burning stars. Eight to 16 damage is crazy. That's like the howling uh, move from the, the Hellion. It does require two power tokens, two or more, and uh, it combos, or it leaves a combo. Man, the upgrade, so ignores Gar. The upgrade is going to be really interesting to see. Puts a combo without a point. Now we have something where it feels okay to get power charges. I do feel like one of the earlier moves that he has, maybe one of his starting moves, should utilize power charges. Maybe they need to it's a Christmas switch two around, but anyway, seems very useful. Hits any position. All right, the Occultist final shrine. Echoes of the past and see what it's like. It can't be cooler than the previous one, that's for sure. I am shrouded by an endless night where the prowl, they prowl and whisper all names.
Chapter 5 An Eternal Flame Emerging from his trance, he met the charred, steaming corpses of his acolytes with a shudder. He could sense the eldritch entity stalking the edges of his consciousness, probing for weaknesses. He had become a beacon, a conduit to unknown regions, and would be assailed by those blasphemous forces all the rest of his days. Haunted by the Shambler. We did it. The Occultist is done. Look at this fine fellow here. Got our mastery point, of course. And the final two moves for the Occultist. Anamnesis? 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 Anyway. Uh, he can use it for position one or two. It does require him to have two of his power tokens. It hits all four enemy slots. Uh, that is very good at removing tokens. And a three bleed unupgraded in all four slots is actually kind of crazy. Uh, this is not even upgraded yet. So we'll have to see the upgrade. Of course, it's a slow move because of the reliance on his power charges. But, you know, it's actually not hard to get his power charges. A lot of his moves give it to him. Uh, some of them off just kills, some of them off combos. So putting him in a team with like the Jester, which we have done a lot. He ends up getting a lot of power tokens, even when you're not really trying. So, um, seems seems pretty interesting. Chaotic offering requires self to be above 15% uh, health. Has a cooldown of three, and inflicts 15% damage on itself. Gives him a power token, and at turn start gets another power token. So you can even do this. Uh, obviously, he's going to take some damage, but you can use chaotic offering on round one. We'll have to see what the upgrade does. And that would allow him to use uh, any of his other big moves like this the very next round. So actually not as slow as you would think with Chaotic Offering as long as you're willing to spin that 15% HP. All right, another character done.